basically, she told me this is what her doctor says, that she's a complete miracle. Okay, so um, this is Becca right after um, her surgery, and this is what Becca looks like today. Wait till the next day. Hang on. Wait, hang on. You know, so cool in front of 7,000 people to let her stand up. This is awesome. But the thing is, you know, her story, again, is backed by um, the science. Now, remember I told you about the cardiovascular surgeon who said that she couldn't have um, children. Well, that's her right here at the Cleveland Clinic. At one point, Becca was on, and she told me, between 120 and 150 pills a week. Yeah, and during that period of time, over those months, they were gradually weaning her off this medication. They're wondering, what in the world's going on? But whatever you're doing, keep doing it. And this is a visit that she had last year at the Cleveland Clinic. At that particular visit, um, they took her off her last medication. That one doctor said, that's her cardiovascular surgeon, said, go out and have as many kids as you want. Wow. Unbelievable. Wow. It's unbelievable. Again, I'm not saying it's a miracle, guys. I'm not here to tell you that. That's not what I'm portraying to you. What I'm saying to you is that you put those nutrients into your body, your body's going to figure out what to do with it. Okay, your body's going to figure out what to do with it. And this one's a little bit closer home. This is um, my oldest stepson, Grant, who got up here. And Grant suffered from really bad asthma um, from the age of you know, four months up to four years. And as an ER doctor, I mean, we see these kids all the time bouncing in and out of ERs. You know, they're on constantly on nebulizers, steroids, antibiotics, and that was Grant. And to the point at which Heidi, you know, she'd have to go in and check on him at night to make sure he's still breathing. I mean, pretty bad. So um, she was desperately looking for something natural to be able to give him that would arm his own body's defenses to see if that would help. So they were, she was, they were introduced to Juice Plus years ago. She started on him right, started him on them right away. And within four months, uh, no more nebulizers, no more steroids, no more ER visits, and only occasional antibiotic. You know, if you got an ear infection or a throat infection, okay, again. But his story, again, would be a mere testimonial if it wasn't backed by the science. And the science shows that Juice Plus will arm and optimize your immune system by increasing things like gamma delta T cells, increasing natural killer cytotoxicity, increasing interleukin-2, decreasing, again, tumor necrosis factor. Again, folks, these are hardcore values, markers, inflammatory, or you know, immune markers that are, are optimized in people who took Juice Plus compared to the placebo groups in these studies. Again, the science backs up what happened to Grant. Okay, so he went on to swim at uh, Division I School of Arizona State, great swimmer, and we're gonna, in a few weeks, actually gonna go to uh, University of Miami and watch him graduate with a PhD in physical therapy. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> and that makes every mom happy, right? So, and so um, I just want to tell you my story before I close, and, and uh, because it, it's important for you know, to know why I'm passionate about this. And actually, my story, story, my story starts and really ties in deeply with the research, which is where I want to start. Um, you know, Juice Plus has three studies to date on exercise and uh, and, 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 and the effect that Juice Plus has in exercise. Um, and they're published in the top sports medicine journal. It's this journal here is called Medicine and Science in Sports and Exercise. Again, this is the official journal of the American College of, of Sports Medicine. But this particular study I tell people is a can opener for my brain. And understanding how important the nutrients, the micronutrients in Juice Plus are to exercise performance. So you guys who exercise, athletes at any level, listen to this. This was a story that, uh, a study that was done on the Austrian Special Forces Cobra Unit, which over there is their equivalent to our Navy SEALs. You know, these are big, rough, rugged guys. You know, they're under a lot of physical and psychological stress. And basically it was a seven month study they did on these athletes exercising them periodically during the seven-month window. There are two groups in the study. One group of athletes that got the dummy pill or the placebo, which is depicted in the red bars, and the other group of athletes that took Juice Plus, which is depicted in the green bars. And the researchers wanted to know what kind of protein oxidation, protein damage, muscle protein damage is occurring in these athletes' bodies as a function of them exercising during the seven-month window. And without going into great detail, what they found out from the beginning of the study at baseline to the final exercise session was that there was a significant accumulation of these oxidized or damaged proteins circulating around in these athletes' bodies that were not taking Juice Plus, that were taking a dummy pill of placebo. That's compared to the athletes in the study that were taking Juice Plus, and they didn't have any accumulation of those oxidized proteins in their bodies. So what does that mean to us? Well, just within the last two, three, four, five years, study after study after study, is now making the link between this accumulation of these oxidized proteins in athletes' bodies 
to overtraining and overreaching syndromes. So you see an athlete, this could be little Johnny going off to soccer, all the way up to the elite athlete that start off a new season healthy. But as that season progresses and the training starts to get ramped up, they start to get more and more sore, more and more tired, more and more sick, more and more injured. Well, they're now making the link to this accumulation of these oxidized proteins in athletes' bodies, not only within a particular season, but carryover from one season to the next. You know, I've spoken to tons of, of pro athletes and high-end athletes. And, and they come up and he's like, I've had you know, a good season four or five years, I don't need any of this stuff. Well, the problem is, is that we know through the physiology, we know through the science that the body's gonna eventually break down. Why even bother risking that in the first place? Okay, it's like putting oil into your engine. Okay, you keep it running smoothly day in um, and day out. And that kind of ties into my story. So this is, um, this is my finish at the Ironman World Championships. And I just want to finish up by telling you my story because I think it's important to you understand why I'm passionate about what I do. Um, but again, why it's very different than what I, what I was trained to do. And as I mentioned at the outset of the lecture, again, as doctors were trained to look for and treat disease. And I spent many, many years doing it. There's a place for that. But I've now spent many, many years on the other side of that wall called prevention. And it's amazing to me that I look back in all my years as a clinician that so many of the diseases that I was treating and writing multiple prescriptions for were completely preventable by what we talked about tonight, lifestyle. So again, this is my finish the Ironman World Championships. It took me 10 hours, 10 minutes, and 12 seconds. I'll never forget the 12 seconds as long as I <laughs> My goodness, that was a long nonstop day. Um, but I actually had a pretty good race. I, I, I finished the race, went upstairs in the hotel, showered, came downstairs, and then um, ate dinner and then sat at the finishing line watching people finish the race. This is the one that you see televised every year on NBC. They got mm -hmm. cameras and helicopters, and it's kind of a pretty cool event. And that's not to say that I wasn't sore or tired, because I was. I mean, that's a long, nonstop day. But I felt distinctly different in this race versus the year before when I did um, Ironman Florida. And I had an absolutely miserable race in Ironman Florida. I was flat, fatigued, and, and tired going into race day itself, which I now know is because I had accumulated all those oxidized proteins in my body from all the voluminous training I was doing and not protecting myself. Um, subsequently, I had a miserable race. Uh, for about two to three days after race, I was so sore I could barely walk. And for probably about a month after race, I was constantly sick. One cough, one cold, one upper respiratory infection. Basically, my body was trashed. And I hate to admit it, but at that time, in 04, I was taking up to eight vitamin, mineral, and herbal supplements. I had a concoction of pills and things that I was putting into my body based on the testimonials of my training partners. If it was working for them, it would probably work for me down the hatch without doing a lick of research. And now I know based on some of the things I've talked to you tonight about, they were toxic to my body. They were, they were counteracting what I wanted to have happen. And the only thing I did differently from that race <clears throat> to this race a year later was I was approached by a very attractive and intelligent woman who started engaging me in this conversation about <laughs> oxidative stress that occurs when you exercise. <laughs> and of course, I didn't know what that was because they don't teach doctors about oxidative stress. You know? But she was very insistent that I take these fruits and veggies in capsules. And if you're a healthcare provider out there, you know that we are trained to be skeptical. And I was very <coughs> skeptical. What could fruits and veggies and capsules do for me that I wasn't already getting in a heavy plant-based diet? Yeah. But I took them because I wanted to date her. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're married. <laughs> So true. Um, but the reason I say that, the reason I knock on myself, because it really was difficult for me to wrap my Ivy League doctor brain around something as simple as fruits and veggies and capsules. And it wasn't complicated enough for me. You know, it was too simple. I could turn around a bottle of juice plus and I could pronounce everything in it because it was food. I, but I did take them because I wanted to date her, so <laughs> it really is a do whatever it takes, you know. <laughs> And uh, so I was training for Ironman uh, Hawaii. Has anybody done an Ironman in here? Oh, good for you guys. Crazy like I am. But, you know, if you train for an Ironman, you know that that's like a full-time job. You know, sometimes four, five, six hours a day training. And um, so I started taking Juice Plus in, in, in training. I knew my body well. It wasn't right away, but uh, two to three months into taking Juice Plus, I did start to notice some subtle kind of anecdotal testimonial things that were happening to my body that in all my years as a collegiate swimmer in triathlete I'd never noticed before. 
And then since I was having a lot less muscle and joint pain, I was recovering a lot quicker between my training and racing sessions. And the other thing I noticed is I wasn't getting sick anymore. I just thought as an athlete, that, you know, a training athlete, that it's common to get two or three colds a year. And that wouldn't happen anymore. And the interesting thing was that all my training partners were still suffering with all that. So I knew that Juice Plus was providing for me, it was filling in the gaps of what I wasn't already getting in a healthy plant-based diet. But being the ever skeptic that I was, I just thought it was a placebo effect. So that's when I decided to look at the research on it. And at that time, I think there were like 15, 18 studies now, over 35. But at that time, two of the studies on Juice Plus were published in my sports medicine journal, one I put up for you guys tonight. Medicine and Science and Sports and Exercise, wow. I mean, they can study fruits and veggies and capsules with a placebo in humans, not rats, mice, or test tubes, using gold standard protocol, get those kinds of results, and then have them accepted and published in one of the top sports medicine journals in the world, bam. Light bulb went off for it. Just totally on. Totally on. So I'm going to end with uh, an inspirational story if I can get through it. Um, this is my younger brother, Will. And we believe that my younger brother was born with a heart defect. And he kind of suffered his whole life, and, but it was really later in, in life that it really caused big problems. He ended up having heart attacks and strokes. And um, last April, he went at the age of 50, went into complete cardiac failure uh, right out of the blue. And he was rushed. Um, to the Mayo Clinic in Scottsdale, Arizona, and was immediately put on the, um, the heart transplant list. And so there he sat, or literally he laid flat uh, for two months waiting for a heart. Well, unfortunately, uh, two months went by and uh, heart didn't show. And so at that point, what they do is they do open heart surgery on you, and they put a pump in your heart. It's called an LDAT, or left ventricular assist device. So that was the next procedure for him. Well, he wasn't having to do it, and he was done. And he was like, I made my peace with the Lord, I'm out. He was, he'd been a pain cushion his whole life, and he's just completely fed up, I'm tired. And for me, no, that's not good enough. And I told him, I said, I can't imagine what you're going through, I can't even fathom it, but you can't, you can't shut the story, you can't shut your book down, that's not right. I mean, you have a wife to live for, you have um, you know, your son to live for, and one day you're gonna be the recipient of a heart that another family had to lose a loved one for, you need to carry on the legacy. You know, there's, you're going to have a story to write that's going to be huge. So um, he ended up having the procedure. This was him. Uh, it's a little fuzzy. Immediately post-op, hooked up to all these machines. And this was him, I think, probably about a week and a half to two weeks after. <laughs> so, um, boy, I time. The reason why I put this up for you guys tonight is that you know, my brother didn't have a choice. He didn't have a choice between the apple or the scalpel. He was dealt a bad hand right off the bat. I dare say that almost every single one of us tonight, we have this choice. Okay, we have the choice to avoid that over there. Because living a healthy lifestyle can really, really prevent that from happening in the first place. Okay. So my brother, good news, he did get a heart at the end of August. This is a picture of us at Christmas. <laughs> And it's like he's a whole new man. It's amazing. His, his, like his whole world has opened up to him. You know, he's lived his whole life feeling crummy every single day. And now his heart is bathed in Juice Plus every single day. So the bottom line is, you know what? Life doesn't get better by chance. It gets better by change. And you know what kind of change is there? You know, what will be a change for you? You know, maybe you want to start an exercise program. Maybe you want to put more plants into your diet, drink more water, de-stress, whatever it is. Just understand that what I've tried to show you guys tonight is that Juice Plus products, they're not, they're not a miracle magic bullet, okay? But what they are is a catalyst. A catalyst to optimize your physiology. A catalyst that's backed by the science that shows that it can do that to you. Okay, this is the real deal. This is absolutely the real deal. Yeah, and so the bottom line is, as a company, we're taking healthy back. We're taking through the healthy living revolution. That's what our mission is, is to, to lock arms with everybody and say, you know what? We're tired of being sick and tired. As a community, we can affect people all around the world, and that's what this company has dedicated itself to, locking arms with other healthcare professionals and everybody in general. It's just not healthcare professionals. We all have a mission. People need us. People really need 
this message, there's a hurting world out there in a medical system that's not going to address their needs. Okay, and I know that as a doctor. Okay, so all the tools are here. So I want you to think about this tonight. Think about what this information will do for you. Then think about your families. Okay, but then think about the people around you, the people that you love that are around you that really do need this because it's little baby steps that can have a profound influence for people's lives. Okay, and every tool is here for you. Okay, so I hope that you lean up against this information tonight and really think about it because when the science backs the stories and you have what we have here as a community, it's, it's we're unstoppable, and that's why I'm so passionate to be a member of this community and why it's just completely changed my life and people all over the world. So I want to thank you guys so much for, uh, for inviting me. Hopefully I'll be back again soon. So what they say about revolution is when the nature and the power of distribution shifts. Health is tribal, health is blue collar activity, and everyone in the room here tonight um, has an impact in those that they are near and dear to their hearts. And I want to thank everyone for tuning in tonight. There's a lot of moms in the room that are on a mission. I want to thank the dads for being in the room tonight. Um, we have a uh, upcoming series of wonderful speakers that are headed this way. Uh, but I do want to just take a moment and just thank this guy again for his passion and his commitment and his dedication to his student of conversation. Thank you. So June, June 1st, you want to put this on your calendar, we have a peer of Dr. David Phillips, we have Dr. Paul Stricker, June 1st, uh, he's going to be in Denver, and he is one of 100 physicians in the country that is board certified in both pediatrics and sports medicine. So if there's any hockey moms or soccer moms or dad, mom, dad soccer guys in the room, whatever, you know the drill, uh, he is a wonderful uh, a colleague, and, and he will bring his A-game as well. And then we have the Steve Irwin. Remember Steve Irwin, crocodile guy? Remember that guy with that energy? We have the Steve Irwin of Growing Food Up in Towers, Dr. or Dr. He is a doctor. Stephen Ritz will be here June 23rd. And if you want to come into the room and get some energy, um, I would encourage you both to come to Dr. Paul Stricker June 1st and Dr. or Stephen Ritz uh, June 23rd. Thank you all for coming. Time's the currency of life. Thanks for some of yours tonight. Be safe. God bless. Thank you.